Good evening, everybody. Hell's Unicorn here again after a very long hiatus. Well, it seems the illustrious actor Gary Oldman has made some headlines, and that's definitely an understatement. I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can just because there's not really much to say about this. The crux of the matter is, is that you are not free to speak your mind in this country. Whether what you're saying is right or wrong is kind of besides the point. I'm not going to say that I fully agree with every little detail that was said in Mr. Oldman's uh, recent interview with Playboy, which came off as a very stream of conscious interview. I think he was basically thinking out loud. And, you know, when you're in the kind of business that he's in, you cannot do that. I mean, and it doesn't matter what your political persuasion is, as noted in the interview itself. You know, Alec Baldwin lost a TV show for saying the wrong thing, and he is not an enemy of the PC crowd. He's in tight with them. He's on the same side as them. So, I mean, it's political correctness is very serious business, and if you're going to take it on you'd better be prepared for some serious pushback. And you can see it all over the Internet. You can see it on Facebook, on Twitter, here on YouTube. It's going to start exploding. People like to go on about how in this country you have the right to say what you want, but you don't. I mean, let's be honest here for a second. I am free to say what I choose on this channel, in part because I am remaining relatively anonymous. If somebody really wanted to track me down, they could, but most people cannot get jazzed up enough to do that because they tend to be blocked from my channel before they can really get their outrage at my opinions to fester enough. But somebody that's in the public eye who is, you know, basically in no way, shape, or form anonymous cannot say this stuff, particularly if they are influential. Now, I'll tell you one thing. Commissioner Gordon from the uh, Christopher Nolan Batman movies and every other various character that uh, Mr. Oldman has played, trust me, that gives you a great deal of influence, especially amongst the legions of zombies who treat the theater as if it's their church. They go there, and what they know is what they hear in those films. In many cases, how they vote is determined by what these films tell them. That's not the case for everybody in this country, but I would venture to guess that at the very least, 40 to 50% of people that show up to vote in this country do so based on stuff they see either in the entertainment industry or in the actual movie theater, under the guise of fiction, of course. The other 30 to 40 percent get themselves get their information from something just as unreal, but something that pretends to be a little more real, namely mainstream media coverage. And then there is the 10 percent that, or probably even less than 10 percent, that actually know what's going on. And then there are the people that don't show up to vote, which I think might know something that even the elite 10 percent don't know. But suffice to say. Freedom of speech in America, at least today, is dependent on two things. Number one, if you're going to speak your mind, you cannot be in a position to actually perpetuate a change of mind in anybody else. In, in other words, if you have any level of influence, you are not free to speak your mind, number one. And number two, even if you don't have influence, if you cross over the very hard-to-find line that separates what's politically correct from what's not, you're still going to be in a world of hurt. And the dirty little secret is, and this is something that I part ways with several of my liber libertarian friends on, speech can and indeed often is a weapon. It's basically how all modes of ideology are communicated. So when somebody kills somebody else based on a belief, that is the end result of an idea freely spoken. Now, it might not be a situation where all ideas are being freely spoken with equal opportunity given to each. In fact, I would argue that is a virtual impossibility. Thus, the illusion of free speech the way people believe it to be in 
this particular day and age. But boycotts, particularly when they're promoted and when they involve real studious activism, real effort, it gets to the point of turning into force. When you are depriving somebody of their economic means and you're actually being successful at it, you are engaging in a kind of force as far as I'm concerned. You're not actually hitting somebody with your fist or with a weapon, but speech is a very subtle but very w real weapon in itself. Now, Gary Oldman getting into the actual content of what he said. I'm not going to quote him. I'm not I'm going to link to the article, but I'm not going to actually read anything from it because I want to keep this short, but there is nothing anywhere in that interview that constitutes an expression of what I would call busybody ideology. What I'm seeing in this interview is somebody that is basically tired of seeing what he sees and tired of being subjected to it, too. I mean, there have been rumors running rampant in the Daily Coast, the Democratic Underground, and all these other psycho loony bins that Gary Oldman is some sort of, clo some sort of closeted fascist because he made a couple of comments uh, years back about uh, the idiotic gun control laws that they have in the United Kingdom. But that's neither here nor there, what he actually said. What matters is that if he said something that's contrary to the u utopian ideal that you get rid of guns, you get rid of murder, you're automatically you know, a card-carrying member of the black shirts in 1920s and 30s Italy. Part of this might be that and a couple of other things being piled up on him finally breaking out. Now, then the question becomes, why is he issuing apologies? Why is he apologizing to the ADL? Well, like in the interview itself, <laughs> you know, the theater in Hollywood is, it is, there is a massive collection of people, uh, chosen people, that are pulling the strings. And if you want to work in Hollywood, you got to kiss their ass. That's just the way it works. It's one of the reasons why I'm thankful I never even tried to get into the theater. But anyway, feel free to give me your thoughts on this. My thoughts on this are, is that Gary Oldman might have a little career slump, maybe not quite along the same lines as Mel Gibson. Basically what he was doing in this interview was he was criticizing people for being too heavy hand with, handed with political correctness. And he made a couple of inconvenient observations for people that hold a lot of power in his line of work right now. But whatever. I've only seen, you know, a couple of the movies that uh, Mr. Oldman has been in, and I'm not really much of a movie watcher in this day and age, at least nothing that passed for A-list cinema. So speak amongst yourselves. Maybe I'll even speak among you too. Till next time, with prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.